I love to. I was participating in middle grade March and I have to, whoa, my hall books are falling. I have to tell you guys, I did not do so well in that. It's been a very tumultuous spring for me and uh, mostly because my parents are hitting that age where, you know, they're getting... There goes all the books. <laughs> Every single one of them, just bye-bye. Anyway, my parents are getting at an age where they need more help, they're having multiple health issues, and let's just say for now, we are at a new normal, and I think that we're gonna be at this plateau for a while, at least I hope so, and you know, it's, it's a hard thing to go through for both them and for me and the grandkids, so some of you have been through it. Anyway, I am here, finally. <laughs> after many weeks. Guess what I did? In all the stress of spring break and all my parents' health crises, I book shopped. Because that's what you do, right? Okay, so if I have a chance, I might do a really quick middle grade March, but I'm hoping to do middle grade May. Will anyone do that with me? I'm hoping May is a much better month. It is my birthday month too. So yay, here's to spring and middle grade rates. But in the meantime, here is my March stress-induced book haul. It's pretty massive. One of the things that I did this year is I've gotten a lot better going to the library and requesting books. And I don't know if all libraries are like this. I'm guessing they are because we're in such a small town, but ours actually lets you request books and they will purchase those books for you. And guess what? You get to be number one on the hold list. I mean, it's awesome. So one of the books that I saw bandied about Instagram where I hang out completely and, oh, if you're watching this and you don't see my face on Facebook anymore, yeah, I shut down that account. It was just way too stressful for me. So you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, for sure. And sometimes I'm on Snapchat, not very often though, I have to admit. Anyway, one of the books I saw on Instagram was Kate Rorick's Baby Plan. My comfort reads are chiclets and this just looked so cute. It's about three mothers. It's about their modern day pregnancies and all about over the top gender reveals. And it's about sisters. One may be a scene stealing sister. Social media plays into this. You know, it, it just speaks to me. It really reminds me of Sophie Kinsella's Shopaholic Has a Baby series, which I think was the last in the series that I read. I only read the first three. I need to go back and read some of them. Comment below if you really love the Shopaholic series as a whole. I loved the first, what, three books? But never picked it up. So, comfort read. Okay, the next book I read, it was part of my middle grade February reads. <laughs> I'm kidding. One of my resolutions was to read more middle grade books this year. So, I try to read one a month. And as you guys know, I'm not, there are awesome booktubers shout out to lisa at books and smiles and books and jams krista you guys are awesome you read massive amounts i just can't i'm a slow reader so but one of the books i read in february was nevermore by jessica townsend and i went ahead and ordered a copy because i just found this so enchanting and you know i don't want to compare every middle grade book to harry potter but it had that enchantment feel of harry potter or narnia and this cover is so cute Cute. and I'm hoping that you know both my girls have a chance to read it I am definitely continuing on with this series speaking of continuing on with the series this is one that I started both on audiobook and in paperback and I have not gotten back to it and it features two of my very favorite authors of all time Holly Black and Cassandra Clare the Magisterium series my kind friend M over in Australia shout out to M sent me the whole entire series in the white paperback covers and so I had to get the last one that was just released the silver mask you guys I am hoping to binge read this at some point I will be honest the first book reminded me too much of Harry Potter everything from the chosen one to our three heroes being two boys and a girl and the other boy that's not the chosen hero is athletic you know I just couldn't get past that. But Kat finished the first book and she told me there's a twist that is not Harry Potter like and that I will love so I'll catch up. No surprise here. <laughs> See what I did there? Surprise me by Sophie Kinsella. I had to get the hardcover. You guys, chiclet, comfort reads, dying to read it. My darling friend Katie B over at Monday Moms, shout out to Katie. This is like a shout out video. Sent me a sweet, sweet care package, a little package for no reason at all. And it included this book, 
love and other train wrecks about two people that meet on a train and what happens it just sets up the perfect chicklety plot notice the theme here chicklet chicklet may maybe that's what i'll do it's my birthday month yeah it seems appropriate middle grade may chicklet may speaking of chicklet one of the authors that i absolutely love that's not Cassandra Clare or Holly Black, is Rachel Hawkins. And Rachel is just funny if you're not following her social media accounts, I'll try to remember to link them below. She is hysterical. And I've loved her series that she's put out, let's see now, there's I think three of them in this Rebel Bell series, there's the Hex Hall series, the original one, and then there's a Hex Hall reboot of which only one book was published and I love all of them. She has a new series out and it's called Royals. Can you hear the Lord song? Yeah, he's no prince, but he sure is charming. And doesn't this just remind you of the royal wedding? For the past two royal weddings, three, I don't even know. I mean, I remember the original one with, you know, Princess Diana and Charles. My mom and I woke up really early and watched this and with uh, Kate and William, my kids and I woke up early and I made scones and, you know, I'm planning to do the same with the wedding coming up, but you know, I'll be reading this first. Okay, so part of my cost saving measures this year included canceling our beloved Owl Crate and Uppercase boxes. I do miss them, you guys, and I suppose I do miss doing the unboxing videos with Kat and with Bella. They're super fun to do, but we always felt like we were behind on them, and you know, they're an indulgence if you can afford book boxes i would highly recommend both of those we're not ever sponsored here on this channel but anyway we had prepaid for owl crate so i canceled the subscription but we have a couple of months left because of the prepayment and guess what came in this month's box in fact i posted it on my instagram just a few days ago ashley poston's heart of iron with the beautiful purple sprayed edges i mean that it does come signed and this is by the author of Geekerella. I loved Geekerella. This is a science fiction tale. I, it just couldn't be more perfect. So looking forward. Okay, funny story at my parents' house. They live in Northern California and I never noticed, I mean, I lived there for decades. I never noticed the amount of bats that there are there. When we were over spring break, Kat and I and Bella, would come back to my parents' house and it was dark and there were these three bats that would come flying at our heads for three nights in a row, scared the bejesus out of us. The next day at Target, we found this. <laughs> and so, I mean, I love uh, Marie Lu's books are, you know, definitely on my TBR. I've read one of them. It was the High Fantasy and I forget the name of it. And I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't really my cup of tea, but Kat loved Warcross. And this is a signed copy from Target. I mean, we had to get it because of the bats and the, you know, this is how we buy books, you guys, stress buying. So one of the absolute amazing surprises was we haven't been to a book signing at all this year. It's, you know, April now. And We've all kind of been stressed out about it because it, life's just, it's a little too hard to get across to the Bay Area where all the signings take place. We just happen to be next door. My parents' house is next door to where the signing was. And it just happens to be one of our very favorite authors, Ali Carter, you guys. Not If I Save You First is her new book. I think it's a standalone. I haven't gotten much information on that. But it is a thriller, and I have 45 minutes left in the audiobook. It, the audiobook is amazing. I don't even have to speed it up. I'm listening it, to it at normal 1.0 speed. And it's everything Allie does really well. The president's son, the Secret Service's daughter, the head of the president's security's daughter, and they're stuck in Alaska. It was so fun to see Allie again. So fun to hear how she went about writing the story and what her inspiration was spoiler alert not really a spoiler but she went on a 50th anniversary cruise with her parents to alaska and saw a cabin way out there in the woods and thought huh who would live there it's so good you guys unbelievably good and for my friends who love thrillers lisa 
Books and Smiles, I'm looking at you. I highly recommend this book. So, of course, we had Ali sign a few of the other books that we haven't had her sign. All fall down, see how they run, and take the key and lock her up. This is her Embassy Row series. This is the latest completed series of hers. So, if you haven't, check it out. It's about a girl named Grace who lives in the U.S. Embassy in a fictional town in Europe and she's surrounded by her friends that she's grown up with, but the US and those countries may not be as friendly as you think. So yeah, lots of complications, and I really love this series. Another book, we stopped over at Kepler's, one of my favorite indie stores in the Bay Area, and there was a copy of Gail Foreman's I Have Lost My Way. You guys know I love Gail Foreman. She was one of my early, favorite contemporary authors once I fell back into reading YA. I adore all of her books. These are emotional books. She is able to pull out these emotions for me as a reader that are kind of natural reactions. They're not forced, they're not contrived. This is the latest book. It's about a singer called Freya and she loses her voice while recording a debut album. Haran is making plans to run away from everyone he has ever loved and Nathaniel's arriving in New York City with a backpack a desperate plan and nothing left to lose. And when a fateful accident draws these three strangers together, their secrets start to unravel as they begin to understand that the way out of their own loss might just lie in helping the others out of theirs. Whew, this is gonna be a heavy book for me. A couple of books that were sent to me by publishers, The Prince and the Dressmaker. You guys, this graphic novel by one of my favorite graphic novel publishers for a second. Here's a letter from them. To say that I'm looking forward to this is to really underestimate it. It's about a prince who's looking for a bride or has his parents looking for a bride for him. He's too busy hiding his secret life from everyone. At night, he puts on daring dresses and takes Paris by storm as the fabulous Lady Cristala, the hottest fashion icon in the world capital of fashion. I mean, how good is this gonna be? And another book that was sent to me by Disney Hyperion, I stuck my hand up way up high for this when I saw the email. It's Tamara Ireland Stone's Little Do We Know. I read her time travel trilogy and I absolutely loved it. So this is about next door neighbors and ex best friends, Hannah and Emery, and they haven't spoken in months. Not since the fight, the one where they said things they couldn't take back. Now Emery's fine tuning her UCLA performing arts application and trying to make the most of the months she has left with her boyfriend Luke before they head off to separate colleges. Meanwhile, Hannah's strong faith is shaken when her family's financial problems come to light. <sighs> Stories of friendship. I mean, they're always number one on my list, so. This one comes out in June. And as I mentioned, I've been really good about going to the library. This is a book by Megan Miranda, Fragments of the Lost. And it's about a girl who's asked, this is a bizarre task. I mean, I'm about 20 pages into the book, and honestly, I don't know whether I'm gonna DNF it or not. She's asked by her ex-boyfriend's mother. The ex-boyfriend is dead. We don't really know how, but she's asked to clean up his room, and I'm in the very beginning pages of it. And the mom comes in and tells the girlfriend, you are everywhere in this room, and just like leaves boxes and expects the girl to clean up. And she's literally going through the fragments of her ex-boyfriend's life and trying to piece together, I think, what led him to, what led to his death. A murder mystery maybe, or a suicide? I don't, I don't even know, you guys. Um, I'm kind of mad at the mom, can you tell? <laughs> what an awful thing to uh, ask someone to do, just saying. And the next book that I borrowed from the library is People Like Us by Dana Mele. And this is a boarding school mystery, and it's supposed to be kind of pretty little liars like. Kay Donovan is a star soccer player. There's a dead girl's body that's found by the lake of the school and then Kay's life begins to topple. So it kind of smacks of Pretty Little Liars in boarding school. What a tumultuous month. <laughs> but look what resulted from it. I mean, I can't even begin to lift this. I, Kat does this so well. Yo. <laughs> a little out of control. Yeah. So let me know down below which you guys got in March. And in the meantime, I'll just practice some sort of weightlifting maneuver. Honest to Pete. <sighs> Lots of books. I've got to get better at tackling my TBR. Tell me what you're up to. Leave a comment down below. Give me a like. Subscribe. And hit that bell icon to know when I post things. Because as you can tell, 
I'm not very good at this. I'm not very good, but I keep promising I'll get better. Uh, we'll see. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.